all right what's good youtube another tips video for you guys it's been a while but we're back this one's important i think it's relevant too uh because of the frequency it occurs we're going to be practicing and discussing tips approach how to basically hit jacob de grom his 99 ta3 card I feel like I see it every game. A lot of people tell me the same thing, that every single ranked game you play, you're facing DeGrom or Cabrera or Lighter, but really just it feels like it's DeGrom lately. Uh, fun fact, I played a game today, uh, July 28th, in the morning for YouTube. I recorded it. That was the first game. Before that game, seven in a row in ranked seasons were against DeGrom. The odds of that, I understand. It's just ridiculous, but it's still crazy. It shows you how much you see him. I saw him seven games in a row. It's actually pretty bananas. But um, anyways, we're going to discuss what you should do when facing this card, what to expect, and basically how to approach against him with left-handed hitters, right-handed hitters, um, and by difficulty. So let's get into the, into the gameplay, guys. going to show you guys what to do. So things to know about this DeGrom. Uh, he's got outlier on his fastball, which means it gets to 102 consistently, essentially. Slider, changeup, curve, two seam. What to look out for, obviously, are the fastball and the slider. That changeup can be okay. Um, and the curveball is if it's hard to locate. Two seamer can be effective if it moves like it's supposed to, but sometimes we know two seamers kind of float in this game. They don't really move well. They're supposed to run a lot. Sometimes they kind of just feel like changeups uh, in, in comparison to an outlier fastball. They're really not that great. Um, all right, so let me show you guys what I do. Um, well, first of all, if you want to practice against hitting uh, the Grom, what you should do, right, is download this roster I use, JR underscore Strohs, if you're on PlayStation. I'm not sure if Xbox, it works for you guys, but for PlayStation, it's, it's what I use. My man JR makes this roster. It is everything updated until, uh, up until Kenley and Bryce were added, so all the most relevant players. Right now, I'll hit with, who do I want to hit with to show? I'll start out righty, righty. I'll go Trout. I uh, have all the pitches selected. Unless you want to work on something specific, I'm going to go with everything. I think it's important to start with the basics, use every pitch. I select all the zones. Now, what does that mean? It means that he cannot throw a ball. And maybe if you're having issues swinging at balls and strikes or discerning balls and strikes, maybe your, your you know, approach shouldn't be to do this. It should be to let, you know, balls and strikes be thrown so you can practice. But I have a good eye. Usually that's one of my strengths. I don't really have, I don't really swing at a lot of balls. So I'm fine with this. Uh, I mm -hmm. want to make sure I can get pitches to hit to practice my strategy. So what do I do? Righty, righty. Well, what do you expect? What's going to beat you here? Obvious tunnels to work to look out for. Four seam fastball up and in, down and in. Those are going to be ones that kind of crush you. Up and away doesn't seem to be a problem. You can kind of PCI mash to that one, flick to it, and crush it. I, I think most people don't have a problem with the up and away fastball. It's up and in, righty, righty. Slider low and away is going to be a problem, right? You're sending fastball, and then you get that 92 mile an hour hook. Maybe if they're throwing it over the middle of the plate, it looks like a fastball and then just dives away from your barrel. How do you stay on top of that pitch? Well, my strategy is to keep loose, keep loose, a little bit of hover, and then kind of just drag along slowly where like you think the ball is going to beat you. I drag up here. I think I'm going to get beat here. And then I'll axe down, axe movement, straight chop to the slider. If I get one, or I'll try and get the fastball. Now, approach, a mental approach against the ground that you guys got to keep in mind. Know what's going to happen so you don't get frustrated. If you get frustrated, you're going to lose. You're not going to do well against him. You got to know what's going to happen against the Grom, especially in high difficulties when the, the velocity is crazy and the PCI size are tiny. You're going to strike out a lot. Maybe not strike out, but you're definitely going to swing and miss a lot. You're going to not tie up a lot of baseballs. He's not a contact pitcher. He's an outlier pitcher, strikeout guy. He, your opponent and you, if you're using the Grom, you're going to let up a lot of home runs with the Grom. That's what he lets up. A lot of homers. Outlier pitchers always do. But you're going to get a lot of swing and misses. You're going to overpower some, some hitters in certain at-bats. You can't get frustrated if you strike out or miss a lot of balls, swings, and misses. you got to just search for your pitch. In this instance, I'm looking for a fastball up and in. I don't get it. I get a fastball. That's a hard one to, look, to, to get to, right? It's not one you can mash to. You can mash to it if it's here, 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 here. You have to guide your PCI there and be level with it. That was a two-seamer that I barely even touched, but it's going to fly out because two-seamers are kind of, you know, cheeks. I got enough of it, and he throws hard enough. It feels like the ball just leaves outlier pitchers. Uh, it, it, it leaves the barrel off of outlier pitchers so much harder. Um, not a horrible swing, not a great swing. There we go. Good enough to get a hit. Do your normal pre-pitch movements. A little bit. Of, I do this to keep my myself, you know, quick. Hover. That's a tough pitch to hit. The basics start with you guys not, including me, not getting frustrated if you're getting beat by the Grom on certain swings, getting overpowered. Just recognize you're going to try and find a specific pitch in that bat and get it. That was a terrible PCI. 
But in this moment, where am I going to get beat consistently? Where can I not recover to? It's going to be right here. Uh, I overcompensate on that one. That's a changeup down the middle of the plate. That's a bad pitch on his ass, uh, in his, in his, um, you know, from his perspective, if he throws it to you. But sometimes, you know, if it's so bad, it's good. No one, you know, sometimes the best pitch, if you're facing someone who's cracked and they're hitting everything on every corner, sometimes, the, you know, the most effective pitch you could throw is an accidental one down the middle like that. Just a little bit off of it, but the timing's better. I track the pitch. It's going to be hard. You're not going to be consistent uh, unless you're absolutely out of your mind or if you see DeGrom really well, it's going to be tough. That one, I feel like I was all over it, just a little bit late. Mm, very late and underneath it a little bit. All right, so it's not bad. It, it's all about making sure you get your pitch and then not get frustrated, even if you miss that pitch, right? That was better. We're working on it. I've had good success against the ground as of late. I've adopted a new approach. Um, most pitchers, I do a little bit of this, and I'll move around like that, and I'll stay up here, and I'll, like, go banana. But right now against the ground, I've been, I've been liking keeping in one particular area, hovering around the middle of the zone, hoping for him to miss a pitch either miss a pitch down the middle or throw one exactly on a corner so why i would hope for that is if it's down the middle easy don't move swing and if it's on the corner you flick to it that's when you got a hammer but lately i've been pretty cheeks on hitting changeups on the middle of the plate my ear is so itchy guys forgive me allergies skin crawling all right okay that's when you, can't, you gotta hit but he throws hard now we went enough righty uh righty righty with the ground let's use a lefty hitter we're gonna use kyle schwarber here as an example uh, what is my approach versus him uh, versus the Grom with a lefty hitter? Well, it's a little bit different. Uh, I don't always cheat inside because I'll, t I'll tell you why. Pitchers are generally less likely to come inside to a lefty with the Grom because they, they think you're expecting it. So what do they hammer you with? The two-seamer fading low and away, the fastball up and away occasionally, the fastball out of the zone, and the slider up and down and in with a changeup being tunneled low and in. That's what you generally see. That's a that looked like a two seam. Man, that pitch is hard. See, that's that's a good example of a pitch that's not easy to hit because you can't flick to it. You have to actually just be super accurate with it. That's a good pitch. Uh, I, the, I like to start in middle with my lefty hitters versus the Grom. Keep it up a little, a little elevated, and then if you get a slider down and in, I'm gonna try and set that up right now because I'm right now in my mind I'm thinking slider down and in, but I'm not getting it. So what I'm gonna do is slider. All in. What I'll, I'll show you, I know I know it's coming, so it's a little different, but I'll show you what I'm doing here. Start up, anticipate a fastball up and away, and then you recover by dragging along in. It's so easy to follow that break of that slider with your stick. It's so easy to follow that in. It's the easiest thing ever. You kind of just, it's natural. It's not easy, on the other hand, to be sitting for a slider and then get a fastball and recover. That one was a fast slider. Oh, boy. All right. Now, we're going to mix it up a bit. We have fastballs on every corner, including the mid-level. Change-ups and sliders mm -hmm. activated. So now these are the pitches you're going to mostly see. Um, you're, not, you're not really going to see his curveball, to be honest with you guys. I'm going to actually factor in. We'll do the two-seamer mm -hmm. tunnel in a second. We're going to work on the off-speed right now. Now you mix in the fastball, slider, and the change-up. Step-by-step. Step-by-step. Work on the normal tunnels first, and then add a pitch as you get better and more comfortable with it until eventually everything makes sense. Tough. I was on it, but a little bit late. But it's baby steps. You're going to get pitches to hit. You got to make sure you hit them. Not doing a great job of it right now. But um, find your pitch. Fastball, adjust everything else. That was a change piece. I didn't even touch it, but that's funny. It's going to be a hit. Um, I read slider there. It wasn't a slider. It's not easy. No, I'm a, a higher-ranked player, guys. And even I have trouble with it. Uh, the point is, this year, you can't get frustrated on Legend or Hall of Fame or whatever you're having difficulty with because it's just harder to hit in general. Boom. Not even touching it. Kyle Schwarber's a demon. Uh, but if they miss in spots like that with change-ups, it's going to get hammered because for some reason that just happens. Pitches, like, off-speed pitches up in the zone, if they get, like, remotely touched, they get crushed. I just feel like it's, like, a penalty for throwing a pitch up there. I don't know. A little, a little conspiracy, but anyways not a bad swing it's all about tracking the pitches and getting used to the tunnels now here's a common tunnel that people kind of get thrown off a little bit with we'll do... fastball and two seam four seam two seam mix here and here it's dis it's discerning the difference between the two that was a four seam it's a tough tunnel a lot of people end up rolling over it with a lefty all game that's how they get that's how they get out versus the grom 
Another one. Damn, he's throwing gas. I don't know. Does this still have outlier on uh, on the live series? I don't know. It's only throwing 98. We'll see. I don't think this one has outlier. But, um... Yeah, I don't think he has outlier in the practice rosters because it's live series, the Grom that, that uh, JR is using. And live series, the Grom doesn't have outlier, I don't think. Oh, no, he does. I don't know. That was a two-seam. It's better in my mind to be early on that pitch because it feels like two-seamers get yanked for early homers all the time. But it's also... It's not even about timing, really. It's about making sure that you get your PCI on it, centered on it. That is more... Centered PCI with early is better than being uh, off PCI with good timing. Always, 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 always. Keep that in mind. Right now, I'm purposely yelling myself get blown back because I want to make sure that I'm seeing the pitch and recognizing what I'm looking at here and focusing more on getting the PCI all over it. That was a good swing. That's generally my approach, guys, uh, versus the Grom. So to go over it again... Um, be ready to strike out and swing and miss a lot. Don't get frustrated. Know your homers are going to come. He's going to make mistakes. You're going to tank a fastball every now and then if you're sitting on it. When you're using a lefty hitter versus the Grom, make sure you watch out for that low and away two-seam tunnel with the four-seam. You don't roll over on it too much. Keep the, the, the PCI starting up a little bit. Cheat for that high fastball. React to the slider down and in. You'll have time to flick to it and mash to it. You can lay off the changeup in the curveball. He's not going to consistently dot those. And if he does, I'd be surprised. Righty, righty, cover up and in. That's what I do. If it, work, if it works for me, maybe it'll work for you. Who knows? Cover up in that's where I'm weak, where most people are weak. Cover that area. Turn on that as, as fast as you can. Um, the two-seamer, you'll hammer it. If you're if you're waiting for a four-seam up and in the two-seam, you'll be just fine for it. Slider, follow it with your PCI. If, you, if, you get, if you're waiting for a fastball up and in, right, and you see a slider coming in, if you're able to recognize it, just drag and follow. Even, even if you're a little early on it, he throws the slider hard, you could pull it for a base hit in the gap. The most important thing is to make sure if you're sitting on that fastball and you get that fastball, to hit the fastball. What are you going to see a lot of from DeGrom? That fastball. You know you're going to get at least one or two in that bat. Hit it. Make sure you're ready for it and hit it. That's my approach against DeGrom, guys. Hopefully it helps. If you guys have any more questions, comment. Let me know, okay? Let me know in the description. Or the description. <laughs> let me know in the comment section if you guys have any questions, you want to know any more stuff. Like the video if you enjoyed it. If it helps you out a little bit, hopefully subscribe put that bell on so you don't miss when i post and don't miss tips videos like these well that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh enjoy the rest of your day i'm out bye